Hey, welcome back. My name is Alan. This is part five of the ZBrush 101 series. This one might seem a little bit boring, but we're going to go over basically like the most used kind of palettes, menus, things like that. The ones that actually matter. And we're going to skip over the ones that I think that you probably won't use or the ones that I rarely use. Now, if I say we don't need it, that doesn't mean you'll never use it. It also doesn't mean it's not amazing. For example, we're going to skip right over Nano Mesh and it's amazing, but uh, it's not needed right now. So keep that in mind. And some of the other ones that are super important, this is just a very brief overview and we'll do a deep dive in a later video. Very first one, right? This is how you load your tools, save your tools, save next is always handy. Those are the most important. We also have import. Below that, we have sub tool, super important. This little creepy bug thing has many, many sub tools. While I'm sculpting, if I hold alt and tap or left click, I can hop between the sub tools or I can just click the little icons. We've done that before. You can change the visible count. So if I would like this to be a little bit smaller or larger, I can left click and drag on this orange slider to go up and down. And for example, if I want to hide something, I can tap the eyeball and now the eyes are hidden. Tap the eyeball again, they're back. If I hold shift and tap an eyeball, all of them are hidden. Hold shift, tap an eyeball, they'll all come back. Now, if I have this selected, there's a lot more to it, but that is pretty much how you're going to use sub tools. Uh, we can move them up and down if we need to. This is going to just toggle up and down. I never use that. We can make folders if we like. I can press new folder. We're going to call this head. So I can place the head inside of there. I could left click and drag on the little image there and then drop it into the head folder. So let me deselect a different sub tool, press the eye on the folder. And now you can see the whole head is hidden. I can collapse these folders a little bit more organized. There are lots of things that you can do within these folders, but that's enough for now. Next up, we can rename sub tools. We can duplicate. That'll be important if for whatever reason I need another one of these. Let's duplicate. I could press W or press move up here. We can move this out and up. And honestly, that kind of looks pretty cool. I kind of like that. I might keep that. We can delete our sub tools if we'd like. Insert and append. So if I wanted to bring in another object, I could go to a pin, bring in a sphere. Now I start sculpting on the sphere. I could insert other tools. For example, I've got a couple different things here that I could bring in and delete our sub tools. So under that is split. But before we go to split, we're going to merge. So merge. We have merge down. That's the one that I use the most. So I am on this sub tool. If I merge down, it's taking this sub tool and merging it down to this one. And now you'll see if I go to solo mode, instead of being two separate pieces, this is one piece, or at least it'll behave like one piece. And when you sculpt on it, it looks like it's all one piece now, but take a look at like move topological. It behaves separately. And then if I use the normal move brush, behaves as one piece. So while it's a combined kind of sub tool, it's been merged. This isn't like fused together. These two are still penetrating each other. And if I wanted to not do that, right, I could dynamesh this. Okay. And then we have split. So split is just going to take these two pieces and I'm going to say split two parts in this instance. Okay. So now we've got the top piece and we also have the bottom piece. Moving on down, we have Boolean. So Boolean is great and amazing. We'll use that at a later time. Don't use that. Nope, 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 nope. Project is great. We know that's where we did project history in the last video. Nope, nope. Extract is pretty cool. You will use that as a newcomer. So I'm gonna hold control. I have the lasso out. So I'm gonna go back to freehand just so I can paint. So I'm painting a mask on here. Maybe I want this guy to have a little bit more detail or like armor or something. Remember if I hold alt and control, I can come in here and take stuff away from it. So I'm like erasing parts of my mask. There we go. And now I press extract. So I'm just looking at the thickness right now. If I don't like the thickness, come over here, change the thickness. Let's do 0.01 and then press extract. I'm just paying attention to the thickness. That looks good. I'll hit accept. And what that's done is it has taken, I'm going to clear my mask, hold control, left click and drag, press W. This little button will center that guy. We'll dive more into the gizmo later. This has taken that mask and extracted. And now I have this separate sub tool that I could then come through here, adjust. I could dynamesh. I could sculpt on this, do anything that I want to it. Great for armor, great for all kinds of things and don't need redshift. So let's collapse our sub tool palette, dive into geometry. This is super important. This is where we can have our subdivisions. So you can press divide. Looks like something's hidden. To get more subdivisions, I can go down to a lower subdivision level. I can make my changes go back up. Typically people will make giant changes to their mesh at a lower subdivision level if needed. And then they will work their way back up, sculpt in details. <laughs> 
we can delete lower or, you know, if we have higher subdivisions, we can delete higher. So if I don't want that anymore, delete it. If I don't want anything lower, delete it. And now I'm just stuck with this amount of detail. Proxy pose is cool, but we're not going to dive into that. Awesome. Use it all the time. Not touching it right now. Nope. 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 Clay polish. Dynamesh. We've already discussed that. Super important. Z remesher. Awesome. Boom. Click it. Get great geometry flowing throughout your mesh. We already covered that. Modify topology. This one is important mainly because of these two buttons, mirror and weld and delete hidden. That is literally the only thing I use inside of here. Mirror and weld. Let's go ahead to the face. Actually, let me turn off symmetry. So transform, activate symmetry. We're going to move this. It's a thing to note. Every subtool has its own symmetry that can be toggled on or off. So I have made this mesh uh, asymmetrical. It probably was already, but if I would like it to be symmetrical, under geometry, modified topology, mirror and weld. And currently there's an X, Y, and Z there. It's on X. So I'm going to click it. Ooh, it says can't do it with subdivision. So now we get to use our delete lower or higher. I'm going to go down some delete higher, delete lower. Boom. I don't have subdivisions, mirror and weld. This is something that would have happened, you know, earlier in the process, the mirroring, but that's how you do it. Also, if for whatever reason, let's say I'm working on this face and I want like his brain is exposed here for whatever reason, hold control, left click and drag to make a mask. I'm going to hold control and tap outside of my mesh to invert that because I have this button called delete hidden, but nothing's hidden yet, right? So I have to actually go and hide this. And that is skipping way down here to visibility, hide points, and then we bounce all the way back to delete hidden. Now those are 100% gone. Let's go ahead and dynamesh this that up a little, pull the blur down for whatever reason I wanted that to happen. And then I could come in here and sculpt all the gooey brains and whatnot. Whatever. Awesome, right? Repeat the similar parts is super handy. Not going to touch it. Stagers, great. Not going to touch it. Nope, nope, nope. So array mesh, wonderful. Super cool. Not worried about it. Nano mesh, wonderful. Not worried about it. Flying bridge, since it's so easy to set up, I'll show you it. I don't use it a whole heck of a lot. A masked portion on your model and another masked portion on your model. Slime bridge. And then we have tension, bridges, branches, and capillaries. You can change all this stuff. Hit slime bridge. And it is going to make these little tendrils uh, that will connect, but you can like finesse this stuff. There we go. So maybe that's a little bit more usable. Come in there, sculpt on it, do whatever you want. That one's a fun one. Not really used a whole lot. Ooh, thick skin. This is such a good one. So let's say I've got my clay buildup brush. I have a softer alpha. Great. I am going to turn this to spray. So instead of sculpting normally, which would look like this, this is taking that alpha and kind of scattering it right around in that area but it's destroying my detail. Look at these little fine wrinkles. Those wrinkles are destroyed. With thick skin, we're gonna come here, press thick skin, and then you have to left click and drag the thickness and you'll notice some weird things happening with your mesh. This is how far that brush is gonna be able to work. So I'm gonna do something like seven or five, whatever that is. And now when I sculpt, you'll see the brush just goes and goes and goes, and then it kind of hits a wall and then it stops. Same thing if I carve in, it goes and goes and goes, hits a wall and stops, but all those wrinkles are still there. So let's do a more crazy example, a little thicker. Now it pushes, 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 but those wrinkles are all still there. So there is a thick skin brush. You can download your own thick skin brushes or experiment using thick skin with other brushes. Turn that off. Layers. We're not going to dive too deep into this at all, actually. I'm going to press new layer, and this is set to record currently. So let's go ahead and use that clay buildup. Everything's the same. And let's just come in here and do some work. Yay. Awesome. Super cool. And then press record. So it's no longer recording. And then I have this layer that I can dial back to zero if I want there to be none of that, or I can pump it up to one or I could go negative. So it's pretty neat. It's like non-destructive fiber mesh is all your hair stuff. I don't use any of that. If you're in crazy polygon territory, like, you know, hundreds of millions. That's where you're going to be under geometry HD preview don't need that surface. This is noise. I never use it, but it's so simple. So I'm going to go to Lightbox noise makers. These are just like some default noises that are here. Let's use this one. Double click, press Lightbox. Now you'll see like this is not geometry. If I were to come in here and smooth, I'm not smoothing out uh, any of that actual noise. I'm just smoothing out my sculpt. So we can come in and edit this. Here is my sculpt preview. I really like how that's looking down here at the bottom and I can set the noise scale so I can make that a lot smaller. So it looks very, very noisy or those splotches are much larger. I can do all kinds of stuff. Strength, pull that in, out, 
do whatever, I can hit OK. There's my new results. But remember, this is not geometry at the moment. If I want to make it geometry, I can say apply to mesh. And you'll see I lost some of that juicy resolution. So I would need to crank up this resolution. But that noise pattern has been placed throughout my mesh. And I guess let's do that. Let's do divide. So now we're at million polygons. Let's bounce back to surface, apply to mesh. And now more of that resolution is there and I would actually be able to smooth that out. Deformation can be pretty darn cool. I'm gonna go to my brushes, press I for inflate. Maybe I would like this whole face just to be inflated. This is not a good way to do this. Let me crank up the intensity a little. So we could come over to deformation, inflate, and this is set to X, Y, Z currently. So keep that in mind. And I can gently pull this to the right. And now all those features on this subtool are being inflated, or I could go opposite, which is pointless in this case. So we have things like sphere eyes. We can start turning it into a sphere if we pull to the right. That one actually kind of looks cool. Inflate balloon, different results. We can twist. So lots of fun that you can have with this masking. Obviously masking is super important. We can hold control and then we get to pick our masking type. Uh, so we have been on freehand, which is just how I can paint. It's not painting. It's, it's painting a mask on there. I can use drag rectangle. So this drag rectangle is using that alpha, whatever's on here. So nothing's on there currently. So holding control, let's pick this guy. Boom. And now I have that alpha that I can come in here and use. Dot, rectangle, circle, have fun with these. The primary ones are freehand, lasso, and then I never use drag rectangle because just outside my mesh, I can get that drag rectangle. But over here in the controls, we can invert our mask. So instead of this, I can press inverse. So I never use that because I can just hold control and then left click outside my mesh to invert my mask. I can blur my mask by tapping on my mesh by holding control. And this is just gonna blur. Instead of being so sharp of a mask, if I hold control and tap, 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 the mask is a lot smoother. You can see there's like a gradient being formed. So many things that you can do, play around with masking. Visibility, we already talked about hide and show points. Poly groups, we're gonna be here very briefly and we'll do a deep dive later. Polyframe turned on. When I did that hide points, delete points, it actually gave me poly groups here. Now, poly groups are all these different colors whenever you turn on polyframe. This object has different colors than this and this and this. Well, it's different groups that I can assign to sub tools or parts of a mesh. So if I hold control and shift and then tap this poly group, you'll see this is the only thing that I can see on this sub tool. It hit everything else, which can be super powerful. If I want it back, control shift, click outside of it. If we press auto groups, this is just going to assign an auto group, but you'll notice it got rid of that. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to mask this section of the eyebrow. And now I can say from masking and let's clear my mask. I have this new poly group, control shift click that I can come in here and just do whatever I want with all my sculpting. And it's just hid everything else. Obviously not all my sub tools, but even in solo mode, right? Solo mode, I'm just looking at this head and if it's just too, too much going on, control click, get out of there. There we go. Just focus on what I need to. So that's not the only use case for poly groups. There's actually a ton, super helpful. No idea what contact does. Morph target, super powerful, not getting there. I'll show you poly paint. I don't use it a whole lot. Let's get a standard brush. Let's turn off Z add and turn on RGB. So add and sub, those are actually the sculpting. So when those are on, pushing out, it's pulling in. I'm gonna turn that off so it won't sculpt, but I'm adding RGB. So I can pick a color and you'll see this whole thing turns red. I'm gonna go to white, go to color, fill object, and that will fill this object with whatever color is selected. Now, if you're not in solo mode, as soon as you pick a new color, all the other sub tools are gonna turn that color. Don't freak out because as soon as we turn them back to white, they're all gonna, they're all gonna turn white or gray, whatever. So I pick my color. Remember, I won't be sculpting on this. I can come in here and then paint and poly paint on my mesh. Now, this is just basically painting individual points. So if I have very large polygons here and Sculptors Pro is off, my paint might not be super high resolution. Like if I come in here, you'll see it's starting to get all broken apart. It's not super great because it's coloring each individual vertex, so to speak. I don't do UV mapping inside of here. No texture mapping, displacement. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, initialize if you ever need just a boring old cube. This is how you're gonna do it. 